Now we're up in the Bronx at East 180th Street, the old New York, Westchester, and Boston Railway Terminal at Morris Park Avenue and East 180th Street has become the Dyer Avenue Shuttle's south end. The shuttle trains consisted of former elevated cars with open platforms and gates, and they left from the former New York, Westchester, and Boston's northbound platform at East 180th Street, the connection to the main IRT line not having been made yet. This is late 1940s, early 1950s, before the station platforms were extended. The NYW and B platforms could handle five car trains with the end cars overlapping. Uh, the uh, IRT shuttle consisted mostly of two car trains. Occasionally, in snowy weather, four car trains would be run, but they still did not need the whole length of the station. And you'll notice on these station platforms, such as that one at Gun Hill Road, the uh, ends of the uh, station platforms are fenced off uh, in the areas away from the stairways because, uh, as you see here, that fence on the right uh, divided the, un the unused area from the uh, area that was used by the shuttle trains. This is Dyer Avenue Terminal, where the northbound platform was used uh, just as the terminal station for both directions, but the southbound platform had not yet been demolished. We had a quick view of it there as it stood forlorn and abandoned and trackless. Here's a northbound Dyer Avenue train arriving at Dyer Avenue, and now we are looking out the rear of what is probably that same train as it heads south out of Dyer Avenue, crosses the bridge, and takes the switch to get over to the southbound side. There's the old Dyer Avenue terminal as it appeared before the reconstruction into the present form. Here's a southbound train as seen from the East Chester Road Bridge, and a northbound shuttle train as seen from the same bridge. We are looking at the Dyer Avenue shuttle coming southbound into the 180th Street NYW and B terminal. We're standing on the Bronx River Parkway Bridge, which was under construction at that time. And here is the train arriving not at the IRT main station, which is in the background, but at the old NYW and B platform. One track was used for the shuttle in both directions. Except at this station, fares were collected on the train using a Johnson fare box bolted to the car at the conductor's position between the two cars. The overhead ramp may be seen there ready to be placed in service connecting the Dyer Avenue line with the IRT, but it is not yet in use. We're looking from the top of an apartment building on Bronxdale Avenue at a northbound shuttle train crossing the Bronxdale Avenue bridge, passing by the old uh, Bronxdale swimming pool and heading north up into the Morris Park station. The Morris Park Station had three levels, an entrance from Colden Avenue at the southern end, which was never used or very seldom used, a main level with the tracks, and an entrance from the Esplanade up at the upper level, which was the main entrance for years. Now we're leaving from 180th Street, the old NYW and B terminal, looking out the front of a train, showing the old track arrangement that brought southbound trains into the same platform. And we're heading north past the yard trackage, which had been the New York, Westchester, and Boston's Union Port yards and shops. Some of the tracks were still used by the IRT for car storage, as you can see on the right. There's the old yard office building, and beyond it, the NYW and B's Union Port repair shop building, which was used by the New York City transit system for many years. On the left may be seen the ramp which by the early 1950s had already been built to connect the southbound Dyer Avenue line with the uh, southbound IRT main line, but it is not yet in service as the view of the track on the left shows. Now we continue northward past the Union Port shop area. In the distance is the Morris Park station. On the left, the white building is the 
the uh, Pel Bronxdale Swimming Pool at Bronxdale Avenue. As we arrive at the Morris Park Station, you will notice that the portion of the platform south of the tunnel portal is the part that's used for service. The portion of the station platforms in the tunnel at that time was fenced off so that uh, the uh, public would not uh, uh, await a train there and then be disappointed to, to find that the train stopped at the other part of the station south of the fence. There's the fence just plainly visible on the right as we head into the tunnel. Emerging from the tunnel at the north end at Mace Avenue, this portion of the Dyer Avenue line still appears quite similar today, although there is a, a double crossover at this point now. And looking northward from the uh, top of the portal at Mace Avenue, there's a southbound train on the left, and in the Upper center, way up in the distance, is the Gun Hill Road Station. On the right is a northbound shuttle train of the two-car uh, elevated cars that uh, were made surplus from the abandonment of the 9th Avenue elevated and uh, some of the 2nd Avenue elevated in 1940. These cars were all motor cars. There were no trailers. They were refurbished and equipped with subway-type third rail shoes and the Dyer Avenue line was equipped with subway-type third rail. This is Baychester Avenue as a southbound train arrives back at a time when this portion of the Bronx appeared much more rural. Here's Holler's Ice Pond, long since filled in. The Holler family used to cut blocks of ice from this pond in the wintertime and supplied ice to uh, homes and shops all over the Bronx. 222nd Street, as it was in those days, with a southbound dinky, as we used to call the two-car shuttle trains, passing over the bridge through what was then a very rural section of the Northeast Bronx. Today, it's much more built up. Baychester Avenue again, looking northwestward with a southbound train leaving the station in the days before the platforms were extended. When the platforms were extended to accommodate 10-car subway trains, the southern end of the Baychester Avenue southbound platform came almost to the old NYWNB Baychester Avenue tower, which you saw at the upper left there very briefly. The tower has since been demolished, but the foundations can still be seen just south of the south end of the present platform. North of Dyer Avenue was the Kingsbridge Road Station in Mount Vernon. These two stations were very close together, but they were in different fare zones, being across the city line from each other. Back at East 180th Street, sometime around 1954 or 55, the wooden L cars were replaced by surplus steel subway cars of the high-voltage control type, which were made surplus from the Broadway line and Pelham Bay line, by delivery of the post-war IRT cars. These w steel subway cars rattled a lot more than the L cars did, and they served uh, the uh, Dyer Avenue line until 1957, when track connections were finally made with the main IRT at East 180th Street. Here's a two-car shuttle train of the steel subway cars arriving at the old NYWNB's northbound platform at East 180th Street. These cars had manual door controls, as you see there. The conductor manipulates the lever to close the doors, pulls the bell cord to tell the modem and it's all right to start, and away we go northbound, leaving from East 180th Street, the old NYWNB station. As before, we pass the Union Port yards and shops. This time we look out over some of the houses in the area. There on the left is the ramp being prepared to connect the Dyer Avenue line southbound with the IRT main line, but not yet in service.
approaching Morris Park Station again. The south part of the two platforms out in the open air and the daylight were the portions that were used for shuttle train service. There you can see again the fence at the right there, fencing off the portion of the platform in the tunnel. These fences were removed, of course, when the platforms were extended to accommodate 10-car subway trains. A two-car shuttle train in the Pelham Parkway station, completely within the tunnel under Pelham Parkway and the Esplanade, and heading north now from Pelham Parkway station, we emerge into daylight again at the north tunnel portal at Mace Avenue. A northbound train emerging from the tunnel portal and heading up toward Gun Hill Road. And arriving at Gun Hill Road. Notice the fence across the portion of the platform which was not used for service. There's the Johnson fare box, which was mounted in the uh, train in the vestibule of the cars to collect fares at all stations except East 180th Street. Looking north from East Chester Road at a train heading northbound, and this train is approaching Baychester Avenue Station, again with part of the platform fenced off, the portion near the stairway being the portion in use. We pull north from Baychester Avenue and pass through a, an area with uh, tourist cabins, an early form of motel, in what was then the rural Bronx, very near the Boston Post Road, which was the main highway between New York City and the New England area in those days. There's the Boston Post Road as we cross over it. No New England Thruway at that time. There's the two-car shuttle train heading north into Dyer Avenue Terminal. And as seen from such a train, we're heading north into the Dyer Avenue Terminal. The old abandoned southbound platform is still standing on the left, but it's the northbound platform on the right, which is the one that's used for service, both arriving and departing trains. Notice the fence again on the right, which fenced off the farther part of the platform away from the stairways. A northbound train arrives and departs from Dyer Avenue. And so, with this view of the southbound train heading away from Dyer Avenue, we conclude our look at the Dyer Avenue shuttle. <coughs> now let's go over to another part of the Bronx and Manhattan for a look at the Polo Grounds shuttle, which was the remains of the 9th Avenue and 6th Avenue elevated line. This is looking from the 155th Street Bridge down at the remains of the 155th Street elevated station, which was completely truncated here. In the days when the 6th and 9th Avenue L's were running, there were stairways with entrances from the McCombs Dam Bridge, the 155th Street Bridge, down to both L platforms. But by this time, the old southbound platform had been re completely removed, and the northbound platform had been shortened, eliminating the sta stairways from the McCombs Dam Bridge. We're riding a train over the Putnam Bridge from 155th Street to Sedgwick Avenue. Sedgwick Avenue station is what we see here, and the overhead footbridge was the connection to the New York Central Railroad's Putnam Division Terminal, which is the platform that you saw right there, which was built in 1916. Prior to that time, Putnam Division steam-drawn trains came over the Putnam Bridge into the 155th Street L Terminal. But in 1916, the connection to the Jerome Avenue line was built so that 6th and 9th Avenue elevated trains could use the Putnam Bridge. And the Putnam Division had its own terminal then on the Bronx side of the river. Here's the Anderson and Jerome Avenue station, 
this station had three entrances, one at Anderson Avenue above grade and uh, two entrances from Jerome Avenue below grade, only one of which was normally used. We've come across next to 162nd Street and uh, are merging with the Jerome Avenue IRT line, an extension of the Lexington Avenue subway, and we come up to grade Join with the IRT tracks, which come in from the right, and pull up into the 167th Street Station. 6th and 9th Avenue Expresses used to run all the way up to Burnside Avenue, and in rush hours, a few of them went as far as Fordham Road. But the shuttle, which ori originally went to Burnside Avenue, beginning in 1940, was soon cut back to 167th Street and used the switches just north of 167th Street to turn back. As you see here, this two-car shuttle train is using the switches into the middle track and after a southbound Lexington Avenue Express passes, the shuttle train will use the switches in the foreground to come into the southbound track for its journey back to 155th Street. Two Lexington Avenue, Jerome Avenue Expresses pass. And here we are on the northbound platform at 167th Street, watching a two-car shuttle train from 155th Street come up the ramp and head north into the station. Now we are heading back southbound on the northbound shuttle track. During the last year of operation, about 1959, the uh, Giants had already moved out of the polo grounds and the Putnam Division passenger service had ended. And service on this shuttle was down to one train on one track. They chose to use the former northbound track for both directions and the, uh, the former southbound track was abandoned. So here we are heading westward or southward, actually, on the former northbound track, the Anderson Avenue station, now the Sedgwick Avenue station. Notice the rusty rails on the abandoned former southbound track on the right. We head back across the two-track Putnam Bridge to the 155th Street station. The signs still remain to polo grounds. There are the destination signs in the cars of the shuttle, 155th Street on the lower and 167th Street, Jerome Avenue on the upper signs. This train has just left 155th Street on that same track and is heading back toward the Bronx now. Rounding the curve and heading over the Putnam Bridge. And into the Sedgwick Avenue station. Here we are at Sedgwick Avenue, watching a four-car train approach northbound. This scene was taken before the southbound track was abandoned, and the four-car train was run during a week, I believe in 1958, when the Jehovah's Witnesses had a huge convention in Yankee Stadium. The additional cars were used on the shuttle in order to accommodate the crowds of conventioneers. This is Jerome Avenue with the shuttle Sta uh, station uh, crossing over Jerome Avenue. The main entrance from Jerome Avenue was on the left and had turnstiles. The entrance on the right was an auxiliary entrance which had been built there but which had never been equipped for turnstiles and was only used during conventions such as this and especially crowded ball games when tickets would be sold and the uh, passengers would pay their fares by buying tickets and depositing them in chopper boxes. The last place on the IRT or any part of the New York City transit system where tickets were regularly used for fare entrance. Between the Jerome Avenue station and the IRT's Jerome Avenue line at this point on River Avenue, the uh, shuttle structure paralleled 162nd Street and turned northward into the IRT's Jerome Avenue line. There is a southbound IRT 
Lexington Avenue Express on the upper level, passing over the junction with the old 9th Avenue L, now reduced to the 155th Street Polo Grounds Shuttle. Here's that four-car train again, and apparently the, uh, the service uh, had already been cut back to just the one train on one track because the four-car shuttle train is heading southward on the northbound track, dipping under the main IRT Jerome Avenue line, turning through the park just north of 162nd Street on the former northbound track and heading into the Anderson and Jerome Avenue stations. This was another station with three levels, the track level in the middle, Anderson Avenue up above, and uh, Jerome Avenue down below. Notice the lineups of buses there uh, during this convention week when the Jehovah's Witnesses convention was held at Yankee Stadium. The four-car train operated probably late in 1958 or in 1959 because the, uh, uh, the service was uh, here reduced to one train shuttling back and forth on what had been the northbound track. Looking east from the Anderson Jerome Avenue station, we see the shuttle train approaching, and you can see on the left the stairway down to the main Jerome Avenue entrance, and in the distance where the three transverse light bulbs are, the auxiliary entrance from the east side of Jerome Avenue, which was open at this time. Sedgwick Avenue station again, still with the train service reduced to one train on one track. There's the footbridge leading to the abandoned Putnam Division Station, which is out of the picture to the left. Notice the rail fan standing on the sandbox there, capturing pictures of the uh, one-track operation, which they knew was soon going to end completely. There's the polo grounds as we come around the curve off the, hundred, off the Putnam Bridge and head down into the one remaining platform of the 155th Street Station. You can see here how the platform had been shortened. Originally, that platform and its companion on the other side had extended down to the 155th Street Bridge with stairways leading from the bridge to the, uh, the platforms with turnstiles and entrances, as well as entrances from the street level. This was one very busy station in the days of the elevated train service. To mitigate the loss of the L service, the New York City Transit System instituted a paper transfer at 155th Street to the 155th Street uh, station of the IND Concourse Subway. There's a quick glimpse of that later on as the camera swings around to it. These are various views from the 155th Street station looking toward the Bronx. There's a New York Central commuter train southbound on the other side of the river, composed of uh, multiple unit cars built in 1950. And here are the remains. There's the subway entrance down at street level from which a paper transfer was issued to the uh, shuttle. And there's a shuttle train heading out of 155th Street over toward the Bronx crossing the Putnam Division, most likely in 1959.